Hi all, right, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, Skies Above Britain and I've decided to redo uh, Patrol 1, start again basically. I've been swimming about this for a while now so yeah I think I think I'm there. <laughs> I think that's what I want to do. Um, so this would be chapter one. Skirmishing over the channel. Um, Patrol one. And this will just be my part one of the playthrough. Um, I'm going to rename the, the nine previous parts that I recorded. Basically um, along the lines of some kind of practice session or something, I think. I did swither because when I worked out at the end that the victory points and the pilots that I lost, I could probably cope with carrying on that and still be able to, you know, get through the game. But I feel like this the mistakes that I made and the that I found in the last couple of parts, not major. I'm probably able probably I did fix them in a good enough way to like allow things to carry on but still it sort of rubs you up a bit the wrong way that um and also like having four pilots killed uh, I don't know it felt it felt a bit wrong because I've I've realized that I, I was doing something strategically wrong I mean okay how how do you learn that you learn it by playing the game and and whatever. I mean, I, I dare say I could have just went on to Patrol 2, but yeah, well, I've, I've decided to just redo it. Okay. Um, yeah, I still feel unsure. I still feel like I'm at the position now where I could probably just move on to Patrol 2. I mean, I'm assuming, how do you... Yeah, do, do I just start from scratch like this again? Same inbound vector setup? Uh, and then just just do what I'm doing, but make it Patrol 2. I'm assuming that's what happens, isn't it? Because there's these two pages. It does say we're doing six patrols. So I could, right now, say this is Patrol number 2, couldn't I? The only thing being is that killed in action pilots and the likes would not be around anymore. I mean, I've removed all the pilots because my intention was to redraw them um, from my, my roster of 20 pilots into the 12 that's required. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I think I'll, I think I will start again. Then I just briefly thought, well, why not look, why not look at these optional rules? And I thought, no, 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 and and I was fine with how things were. I've just realised that uh, I I was doing some things poorly as well, and and now I've got a better understanding of how things work. Um, so let, so let's do that. So. Right, so I've I've set up the vector markers you can see there. Uh one one two two four two one one two two four two. So they're all set up. So now we're gonna roll for this. And uh, yeah, I had a bit of two of rowing with um with Stu and uh, also Tim was uh, chiming in regarding my issue with this tally ho um uh, event, whatever you call it, it comes comes along with a flak and it was throwing me a little bit and whatever and you know what it, it boils down to it boils down to the fact that we never in that previous playthrough had entered this this step this vector step of the raid vector sequence because we come right down there and made contact right away now i'm guessing that was a kind of lucky kind of thing uh, maybe it doesn't happen very often or or it's maybe not yeah, yeah, it's the percent, the, the, the chances that happen are, are slimmer than most, maybe. Um, and we skip this step, and it's within this step, and it, it does, the tally ho has the raid vector sequence um, as part of its title. So it only happens in this sequence, that tally ho. Um, I guess, I mean, I was, I was reading it from, it, it follows on from the flak event, which is part of the thing, and, and there was nothing to sort of say... Apart from it says the raid vector sequence, I suppose, yeah. But there was nothing to stop me from reading on and then thinking I was able to move things and change altitude of things. Anyway, the guys have got me straightened out of that, um, I hope. And I'm sure that when I enter this vector sequence, uh, vector step, I'm going to see 
it's going to be clearer to me how they're trying to explain it to me. And uh, who knows, we might get the tally ho bit within that as well. So um, that was uh, that was a bit that I was, I was stumbling along with. Um, I still haven't probably got the video footage out there talking about how the bomber cycle... Uh, right, sorry, uh, I got a message there. Um, and I might get another one actually. <laughs> Um, right, so I think I'd, yeah, I think I think that was, yeah, although, although the other thing was the bomber cycle, yeah, it was a bit, uh, I've not, maybe the, all the video footage isn't out there, how I'm finding it a little confusing about the bomber cycle and this whole round one and, and then how many rounds, well, how can it get to round three, is it just through the, uh, what is it? No, sorry, it's not the... Yeah, it's a bomber cycle I'm talking about, yeah. How can it get to... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's down here. I was saying, is, is the only way it can get to round three is by coming from the raid vector sequence. Um, and my take on that, it was through the interceptor straggler that brought that down there. Is that the only way you can get to round three? Because when you keep coming down to the bombers, this bombers... And then you succeed. It, it always it says round one. So you come down and you join the bomber cycle at round one again. And then if you came back, cycled through all this again, came back to this, you're, you're round one again. And then round two can come about through the bomber formation step, where you come into the bomber cycle again and carry out round two. I just can't... The only way I can see you can get a round three is, like I say, this arrow coming from the straggler up, up the top that just then leads you through to cycling through this until the stragglers either gone away or you, you've gone away or something. Um, anyway, I was, I was a little confused with that. But like I say, the video footage hasn't got out to the guys and uh, that are probably going to straighten me out with that one as well. Okay, um, so yes, I am going to start again then. Yeah. Are you sure, Grant? You've got... <laughs> you could... You could change your mind now and just move on to patrol number two, I think. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. I mean, I mean, I enjoy myself with that, so it's not that. But I can see that moving on to patrol two is just similar to what I'm going to be doing right now. So that it just repeats, doesn't it? Until you get right through this chapter, move on to the next chapter, which my guess is things might be a bit different. Um, so uh, it's going to cycle through similar things. Um, is that a bad thing? No, I've not found anything that are sort of any sort of steps throughout that I'm thinking. Oh, that's a bit boring that part. I'm quite enjoy all the bits, uh, and now I've got a better understanding of some of the bits over here. <laughs> and Tim pointing out to me these uh, the tail high sun. Yeah, it covers the high station sun. That's that's what it covers. And he was me sort of scratching my head, and it's right there. Um, so I think that was all cleared up for me as well. What's, that looked like a bit of a daft one on my behalf. Um, okay, let's go. Let's go. So we've set these up. We have to roll for this. This is for my squadron um, to see if it goes in deep, middle or coast. Now, we ended up in coast that first time. And I think that's why things went a bit went quicker and, uh, and whatever. Um, so I'm going to roll. You can see it's on, on an 8 plus. It'll be coast and uh, 1 to 5, etc. So, where's my dice? Here we are. So, hopefully we get something different here, but at least I know what I'm doing. So, seven, right? Well, it's not going to be close. It's going to be the middle one, isn't it? So, it is going to be middle. Um, so, this gets placed in the middle, basically. Mm hmm Yeah, now that means... But that means, that means if the raid marker comes, we're still going to be adjacent to it. If I recall, because we were here the last time, the raid marker appeared in there, and then contact is... Well, not so much... Well, yeah, contact is... Is... Easier. I'm going to say easier. Is there not some role you've got to make on it? I think there is, because that, that would be in the same zone. That's in the adjacent zone. Whereas if we're here and that appears here, I don't think we can contact until it starts or we maybe move on. And this is this is what that tally ho was doing, I think, was, was enabling us to move from there to there, I think. 
Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, we're starting in the middle. Right. Okay, so that's that set. Uh, 20 pilots. I have the same list of my pilots. Um, let's just pretend that none of that happened and uh, these are my pilots. So it's exactly the same. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw them again randomly here. So... Um, yeah, I should flip them. I could have drawn them at a cup. Can I not just draw them at a cup, Grant? Yeah. Right, so... Well, actually, no, we've got a die roll first. Well, I'll put them in the cup. Oh, well, there. Put them in this cup. We've got a die roll to see what we're going to get. Um, so, yeah, let's just do that. Okay. Oh, a big 12. Right. Ooh, that's the one that gives us the ace skill. Oh, well, okay, that's something new to be looking at as well. However, five green pilots. Ooh, okay. So, five green, 12 regular. Uh, mind you, three vet veteran. I think it was that one we got before, wasn't it? And then we get an ace skill. So, let's, well, let's sort out the, the five green first and put them on the roster. So... I think the fact we've got five of them this time, I'm going to use the little cube, uh, the little green cubes that I thought about doing. So I'm going to get five little green cubes out. And um, just to mark these, because these, although they're lovely and whatever, they cover the whole um, pilot in the letter, so you don't know what letter it is. It's not really that important, I suppose, but yeah, I've got a list of names here that I maybe want to know who they are. And it means I've got to take the counter off to have a look. And the little green cubes should should be uh, able to make a, 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 job of that, a better job of that so I can see the letter, shall we say. Um, okay, so... Right, well, let, let me draw the five green pilots then. All right, so I'm just going to draw... Five first out the cup, and these are all going to be green. So I'll pause and draw the five out. Right, uh, so there's all our green pilots. One of them being myself, uh, Ling. Uh, he was a veteran the last time as well. But yeah, it's, it's just all randomly different. Now, the last time I picked all these, shouldn't I really... It does let you just pick these yourself as to who you put in, in play, doesn't it? Um, I've started campaign, roll a die and apply the result. It tells you the distribution of experience your squadron and starts the campaign with. Garnered any skill maybe assigned to any pilot. So it kind of leaves you there. Well, hang on, that's just in there. Let's, let's maybe check the rule book. I don't know, I think I, I picked... All our pilots. Well, hang on a second. All right, so that's what I'm going to use for my green markers, just so I can see the letters rather than cover it all up. Unless I find that that's causing some trouble somewhere. <laughs> it's possible that the the fact it's got a cube on top of it might cause some bother. Um, so yeah, we've got some veterans as well. How many was it? There's three veterans, so let me draw, I'll now draw the three veterans. Right. Oh, and they're up down the bottom here, there's a tight squeeze, I'm, I'm not quite fitting them in right, but... Uh, anyway, so we've got K as a veteran, P and W. Uh, so there are three veterans, and then obviously we've got... Um... Yeah, so hang on, do these have to be in our starting? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying, do these have to be in our starting 12? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It means we only got four regulars. I don't know if that's the case. I'm just. I mean, the last time I done it, it wasn't as bad. We had three green, three veterans, and which is six and six uh, regulars. So we just used the three greens and the three veterans. But um, as a you know, are you meant to do it that way, or should I be randomizing it a bit more, or does it matter? I'm, I'm not sure, but what I think I'll do is I'll take four out of the five green pilots because we've got four sec um, four sections. 
So I'll randomly leave one of these behind. Right, so I'll randomize that and we're going to leave uh, Tansy behind. Uh, just on a die roll there. So we're going to take all the rest of them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then five regulars. Right, so the rest there are regular, so I'm going to take uh, Tansy away. I'm going to leave the blue, green cube, obviously, because uh, he's a green pilot. And uh, that's going to be our starting 12. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Okay, so that's what's left over. We've got five regulars and one green pilot that's not going to take part in this first patrol. Um, now I should take note of all these guys, mark them down in that very first box. Also mark these guys as being green, these guys as being veteran, so I'll do that. Right, so there's everybody that's taken part in this patrol. We've got one, two, three veterans taking part, one, two, three, four green pilots taking part. We've got one green pilot left aside. Um, so I'm just going to distribute these. I'm going to put one of the green pilots in each section, I think. And uh, I'll just put the three veterans in the first three sections and then spread the other guys about. I'm just going to randomly draw them off the thing and uh, put them out there. Right, okay, that's how the setup is. And I want to kind of home in on that because I needed to use <laughs> that at the end of the last scenario because I made a little bit of a blunder and I wanted to know where everyone was. And the good thing is that I can see what words the green pilots are underneath as well now, whereas I couldn't previously and I had to look at what green pilots were selected and all that. And it was a bit more, but it was a mistake that I'd made anyway. Uh, okay, so that's that done. That's our pilot roster created. Um, so uh, what's next? Okay, it looks like I'm running out of time. I, I've, I've taken a bit too much time thinking about it. I had to pause quite a bit. It's uh, 28. I want to go and watch the football tonight. Semi final, first semi final of the European Championships. Uh, Spain against France. Uh, it starts at eight, so uh, I'd like to go and watch that. Um, so, but I'll just go and pause. So can we finish this off? I've got maybe fifteen minutes left at the most. Uh, visibility. That's a pilot setup, isn't it? Oh, they skill. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, oh. I wonder if I should come back to that. Well, that's maybe cheeky though. Maybe I need, need to have it set up before I know some other things. Um, so, is any green regular or veteran pilot may become an ace. They do so by scoring five kills. Well, we're getting this benefit right from the start. So, now, is the ace skill like, like a veteran privilege and it can only be used? Oh, it tells you here. When a pilot scores five kills, select an ace skill and record it on the pilot roster. That skill is permanent and may not be changed. During a patrol, use the ace marker to help you remember which pilot is ace or which ace has used their skill. Pilot may use their skill only once each patrol. Yeah, so it is the same as the veteran's privileges. Pilot earns more than one skill. They may use each skill every patrol. If a pilot earns more. Right, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to mark who's got... Well, yeah, no, I should put some kind of marker on them. I've put green cubes up there, so I'll... Produce a little blue, blue cube, I think, for somewhere. The thing is, though, which skill do I pick? So we've got A, B, C, D, E. Uh, five options. Hmm. Um, I've not really looked at these. So maybe this is something to do while you're paused, Grant. Can I... Is it going to affect... I don't think it's going to affect other things, is it? Well, you know what I'll do? If I'm, if I'm reading through these and I find... Well, you just go and pause just now, Graham. I should go and pause and at least read through these. See what one I fancy. Um, and then maybe come back with some, some knowledge and go over them briefly with you before 
you know, when I make a decision to pick one. And then we've got we've got a rule for the start invisibility. We've got a rule for the uh, no, we don't populate the escort station yet. Yeah, do we? Oh, we do this in clear visibility the moment the raid marker is placed in the raid track, or in other visibility when you make contact. Okay. And then for the bomber type information, we don't do that until when it is time. I can't remember when we do that. Does it not tell you there? It just says when it is time to determine the type of bombers. Roll a die and apply the result. Okay, well we must we must find out when it is time for these to appear. They don't appear just yet, and neither do the escort stations. Um, do this in clear visibility in the moment the raid marker is placed on the raid track, or in other visibility when you make contact. Yeah, so these don't get placed either. So we could roll for the sun, but you know what? I'll come back. I'll pack my skill, and I'll come back, and I'll do that as well, and we'll and then we can move on. We can start playing. I've not got time to really start playing just now anyway, because I've only that 20 minutes. Well, I, you know what, if I've, I'll pause just now and I'll read through these, and if I've got time before the football kicks off, then I'll, um, we'll pick any skill. Okay, I've just got reading the first one, and I, I, I was a little confused. Lucky Charm, it sounds good. Obviously, all these should be kind of good, eh? During a dogfight or the burst step of a bomber round, when you draw a dogfight or bomber card, cancel an icon. Only one icon on the card may be cancelled. And it's this last bit I'm not grasping, although I'm sure it's just me. A hit or return fire marker may be drawn before making this decision. Uh, I, I mean, it got me thinking that you can draw the... Oh, hold on. Thing is, a return fire marker could end up to be. Um, a mechanical. That could end up to be that. You know? But that's a return fire. I mean, if a hit marker just turns out to be like that, I don't think you. Is that saying you can cancel that? Uh, it says you can cancel an icon. Only one icon on the card may be cancelled. And hold on, hold on. That is saying on the card. Whereas that mechanical that I just showed you is not on the card. It's on... But it's just... A hit or return fire marker may be drawn before making this decision. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it basically just saying that you could... Draw that first to see what the outcome of that was before you then... Because the thing is, you could cancel the hit, couldn't you? You could cancel the hit icon, because that's an icon. Or you could cancel the return fire icon. But if you draw before... Or or is it is it saying you can draw the, the, the actual chit and then say, oh, no, 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 I'm going to cancel that hit? Maybe, uh, actually, I, I, I think that's what it's meaning, isn't it? I think that's what it's meaning. I think it's just me not quite just doing my, what I sometimes do and read it in a different way. I don't know. I, I, uh, yeah. Is that is that just me or is that worded in a way to slightly confuse or make me at least wonder? Just me, isn't it? Probably. That's pro that's probably what you're saying. It's just you. Somebody will, somebody will comment in that part time stamped. What is it? 24 minutes. There you go. There's your time stamp, guys. 24 minutes. It's just you, Grant. Uh, okay. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll pause again and uh, have a look. And uh, if I, go, I have to go and end up watching the football, I'll be away for a bit. So um, I'll be back when I'm back. Okay. Cheers. Uh, okay. I'm still here just yet. That's, that's just so, I've probably got time to read through this one. This is quite interesting as well. It means, again, sounds good. Do you, but yeah, I think I've read something somewhere else about this being an exception because it looks like it's an exception to the rule. During a dogfight, perform a slip manoeuvre and add a slip result to the dogfight card. 
so you're guaranteed to succeed at your slip manoeuvre. If in a section, the ace doesn't have to be section leader, but he must be the pilot that slips behind the German fighters. Okay, fair enough. If the section's manoeuvre was evade or turn... No, hang on, hang on. Oh. If the section's manoeuvre was evade or turn... Oh, right, so... Because the other thing is, normally a slip uh, can only be done by a section, isn't it? That's the one that can only be done by the section. Uh, where am I? Right, over here. Slip, section only. Right. And uh, this is obviously an exception to this rule, but... Which is further down, but I'm just getting confused now. Because that... That seems to suggest that although we've got slick on an, on our ace, um, we can pick as a section. We could pick a vade or turn. But why would you, if the section's maneuver was a vade or turn, the skill automatically changes it to slip. So. Can I choose to change it to slip? I mean, can I select I want to use this? Like, what I'm saying is... Um, no, no, because when you when you select a vade, you draw two cards. Ooh, I'm baffled by this one as well. The, the bit that I'd, I'd seen at first was this skill may be used when the ace pilot is independent and it's highlighted in bold there so obviously it is an exception in the normal rule that it should be a section that can do the slip it should have to be a section that carries out a slip maneuver um, it says tail by a Luftwaffe or fighter marker the slip allows the ace to tail the German fighters this skill may be used by when the ace pilot is independent tail by a Luftwaffe or fighter marker slip allows the ace to tail the German fighters yeah, well, that bit's good. Uh, I'm not sure about if the section's manoeuvre was evade or turn, this skill automatically changes it to slip, because... That, right, yeah. I could I could sort of understand it if it was saying turn, because let's just say, right, we're, we're a section, we're going to select turn as a manoeuvre, and then you flip the card over, and turn is not on the card then you step in, use your slick skill to make it a slip manoeuvre. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'm getting that right. <laughs> right, um, I think there's a bit more to look into with these, so... Um, and I'm, I've run out of time now, or I'm going to miss the start of the football, so... I will go and pause here, and uh, we will hunt through these <laughs> ace skills and uh, come back with a decision on which one we're going to make. Uh, so we'll be back later, OK? Cheers. Right, okay, so I'm back. Uh, back after watching the football. It was a good game of football. I won't tell you who won, just in case you're, you have it recorded. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so next next skill along... Yeah, we're, we're a lot unsure. There's a little sort of... Nah. Yeah, I mean, I could go for the Lucky Charm one and probably feel comfortable with that first, but I'm not just sure about this. Uh, this one's nice and easy because it says uh, this skill is available only in chapters three and four, so um, and it's quite there's quite a lot of text to that. So I didn't I didn't even look through that. Uh, glancing at this one, this one says uh, vision when let me zoom on a little bit on them. When a dogfight is triggered, you may replace a Luftwaffe advantage card with an RAF advantage card. If already drawn an RAF advantage card, draw two and select one, discard the other. The ace need not be section leader for a section to benefit from, the, from this ability, but the ace must be in the section. So, again, yeah, it's good. And then Bloodhound. And then, um, at first I thought of this, and then, but then starting reading it, the chase attempt automatically succeeds. So you guarantee the chase. No die roll necessary. Choose trailing or flank position when you chase. If section leader... So, 
again, that one's something to consider, uh, to, to put it on the section leader. Remember, we, we put this ace on somebody. Um, if section leader, you may spend one fuel to place this at section's RAF fighters directly in the bomber formation area, just as though they were independent RAF fighters that successfully performed a chase attempt. So yeah, normally if you're a section, you chase, if you succeed, you go into the, onto the interception map, and then you have to work your way in, but that allows you to spend one fuel and bring it right in. Um, so, Slick, Slick is, um, I'm not feeling comfortable, I know everything about that. This bit still sort of worries me a bit. Draw a dogfighter, burst it, bomb around, you, uh, you draw a dog. Cancel an icon. Just cancel an icon. A hit a return fire marker may be drawn before making this decision. Yeah, that, that does seem to still suggest that you, you're you taking the hit, you're drawing the hit marker, and then you're, you're then chucking your lucky charm in there and saying, no, I don't, I want to cancel that. I want to cancel that hit, I want to put that hit marker back in the cup. Or if it's a return fire marker, you're drawing the return fire marker, you're having a look at it. Um, and again, like I say, I started thinking because they, they don't have just, sometimes they have different things from hit. But it just says, it, it only cancels the icon on the card. That's what it says. Only one icon on the card may be cancelled. Uh, so it doesn't look at chits and sort of cancel them. So it can't be that. So it must be we can take the hit, have a look at it, and then cancel it. Or same with the return fire. And then cancel it. So I think, well, we just go for Lucky Charm, I think. Bloodhound is appealing to me, but... Then I was warned off about doing much in the way of chasing. Um, and the fact that things went so bad that first time round, maybe we should uh, just stick with us. So I'm going to go with this Lucky Charm. Now, is there, is there markers actually that say that? Or do I have to write that down in the pilot? I don't think there is. I don't think I've come across... And yeah, it wouldn't have been too hard to have one, two, three four or five chips with that on it, which makes me think maybe there is. <laughs> um, hang on, quick look. Oh, there's ace markers, yes. Right, okay, they don't tell you what they are, but there's ace markers. Yeah, it doesn't specifically say what it is. So, but what I was going to do is get a blue cube to place it on the pilot up there, just to signify that um, he's our ace. And what I'm going to do when I pick him, I'm going to write Lucky Charm in his notes. Uh, and that'll be that. Right, okay. Right, so I think I'm going to go for, since um, red, yellow and green all have a, a veteran pilot, I think I'm going to put the ace... Uh, Skill on the uh, blue uh, blue leader, um, and that's H. So uh, is that as as Hall? So I'm going to write in the notes there. I'm going to write Lucky Charm. So oh no, it's good. there's a box for Ace skills. So I'm going to put Lucky Charm for him in there. Lucky charm. It almost fits that. Right. Okay, good stuff. Right, let's let's carry on so I can hopefully get um, a little bit of gameplay because it has now 34 minutes. Uh, well, I don't think I've anything else to do. Well, yeah, apart from rolling for the, the sun. So let's do that then. Um, so I'm going to... Die roll, and if we get... Uh, right, during setup, start each patrol roll, die, determine visibility using start and visibility. 
table on this page. If son is present, roll another die. Yeah. So if we get a one to nine, there is gonna be sun, we're gonna roll another die. Which is I think what we want. I think the sun's better. I mean okay, it obviously benefits our opponents at times as well, but well, we've got a one then, so that's definitely that's queer sun. So one is queer sun. Um Yeah, so that goes on here. And then we need to roll to see the location of the sun, right? And I'm much more happier about now knowing since uh, Tim pointed out, pointed out the obvious to me. Uh, that's a nine. So it's starboard. So starboard for the sun. So we swing across here and starboard high sun. And this affects the starboard station here. Starboard station sun. And it, it clearly affects me if I'm in here at high altitude. That's it. It's, I've got it. I, well, if I, if, if I think I've got it and I've not got it, let me know. <laughs> but that seems uh, like it is how it is. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. We start the game. Okay. Right, let's get this out of the way. Right, okay. I was wondering how to do this and maybe just use the sequence of play. But I, I did use the cards previously, so I think we'll, we'll still... Look through the cards here, and um, you know, because that's how I did play out in the first one. Whether I'll stick with this as things go on or not, uh, I'm not sure. So, the first card is reveal, and you can see there that is the first part of the sequence of play raid vector sequence reveal. Um, it refers me to page 43 of the rules, which is great. Um, probably refers me on that card as well. Now, this was, this was about the, um, if we do, if we do happen to move on to this step here, vector, step four, we never reached this in the first attempt. Um, it caused me a bit of trouble. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. We might not get there again, I suppose. I think the fact that we're in, the middle section here, the middle zone, might make it different, but maybe not, maybe not. So if the raid marker is not yet in play, reveal markers in the rightmost space of the track, one at a time. Okay, so that's these vector markers, so we're going to reveal this uh, one at a time. Right, we get the raid right away, and it, we go from top to bottom, so the iron cross is the, the top one there. So I'll just put that on top, actually. So we're getting the raid icon right away, and uh, we didn't quite catch this at first, but um, if the raid marker's in play, reveal the vector. Sorry, the raid marker's not yet in play, reveal the mark markers. Right, apply top effect on the marker, then bottom effect. Apply all events on one marker before revealing the next. We've got the raid marker icon, it's here. It says go to card 5A. So let's just bounce across to 5A and we can come back. So 5A, if the raid marker is not yet in play, place the red mar raid marker in the vector marker space on the raid track. I think this is kind of lucky again. Although I did scour through them and I, I want to say there was about three or four raid markers in the bunch that I used in the first playthrough and there was four left over. I reckon there's maybe three or four of them throughout. But then that means 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. 4 out of 16. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a quarter of them, isn't it? If it's 4. So I suppose it's, there's a reasonable chance. Um, so what are we doing? If the raid marker's not yet in play, place the raid marker in the vector marker space on the raid track. Right, um, yes, okay, so it goes in here, is that right? Yes. Yeah, and then the last time what happened was we drew it again when it was in here and then it went up there, but 
if it delays and it delays, 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 then it can go right along to there, can it? Right, but one of the things we've got to remember that while it's in here, these basically what it's saying is this ray of bombers is over the channel right now. So if any of our guys get um put any fate boxes while this is here, then they're susceptible to uh, the channel bailout recovery thing. Okay, which is another bit that caught me out uh, in the first but I'm sorry if I'm like uh, saying that a lot, but I suppose it's fresh. It's quite fresh in my mind because I was I was just going to move on to the next uh, the next patrol, but I just felt like maybe I hadn't done things justice. So okay, um, okay, so that's that. Oh yeah, and here we go. This is going to check the do the escort stuff, isn't it? So we're we're placed on the raid spit raid track. If visibility is clear, row die to place escort station markers and escort stations on the intersection map. Apply the result indicated in the situation manual. Then go back to card one. Visibility is not clear. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do because visibility is clear. We're clear. Um. So I need the situation manual, which I just put away because I thought we were done with it for a while. Um... So chapter one's skirmishing over the channel. So we've got to, because it's clear, we're going to put the escort stations out. So we're going to roll a die and this is, result's going to happen. I'm just going to swing along here to roll the die because a little space elsewhere. A three. I don't know. A low, oh, I think low numbers are worse. Here. So a three is, yeah, well, yeah, it is, because we're getting two of them. So we're getting a high 109 heavy and a low 110. Okay, so things are getting different right away. Um, it's not that tree grunt. What's the other one? So I need a heavy 109 and a 110. Now, it doesn't say that the one tens are heavy, so they're clearly light on the other, other side. And we say light, it doesn't mention light there as well, but I suppose light is the opposite of heavy, is it? Opposite? <laughs> That's definitely how you would think it. But, um, so, I mean, there's maybe not a light at all. Is, is light mentioned anywhere? It's heavy and just normal. So high 109 heavy, low 110. Um, oops, that was a bit crunchy. Right, right. so uh, high is a 109 heavy. Um, where's the high station marker? There it's there, right? And this only gets the sun from here, Grant. Only gets the sun from here. Not from there, right? So just double checking with that. And then one tens at the low station. Where's the low station? It is here. And I don't think it benefits from the sun at all. So so a heavy 109 and just a normal 110. That's what we're getting. Okay. And then that swings us back to the next card. Uh, no, back to card one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Roll a die, place station markers, apply the result indicated in the station manual, then go back to card one. Okay, so we're back to card one. Uh, yeah, but that's because we've still got another symbol to, icon to resolve, and it's flak one. Oh, so okay, <laughs> we might get this tally whole thing right away then. Interesting. Okay, so the flak is go to card 6A. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're doing. So 6A. Uh, 6B. That's what I keep them in order, so... 
Right, so we've got flak this time. Interesting that this might clear up one of the the situations I had right away, but well, maybe not, maybe not. Right, so note the number printed. Well, yeah, there's part one of two of us. So six B does indeed talk about tally ho, which was was the bit that I was confused for a while, and I'm not still. I'm, I'm not saying I'm confused anymore. The guys, the guys have clearly got it right. It's just that I've just not seen how it works. So, you know, they tried to explain it to me and I'm like, I think a lot of things in this game when you, uh, yeah, you, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. The, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's, let's just carry on, Grant. Note the number printed in the vector marker and draw that many bomber damage markers, her side up. Um, and again, yeah, sorry, uh, I restarted things here, but I'm playing the Hurricanes. I just left everything as is, so that's what I've done previously. Um, but this says her side up for this specifically. So if we've been playing the Spur Spitfires, you would still draw this her side up. And check for catastrophic effect of any. Right, well, the, the numbers are one. So we're going to draw one. Thing is, the bombers aren't up, out there right now, but we do this now. So I'm going to draw a damage marker. It'd be interesting if this is a catastrophic, but. Right, so we draw, and it is. Wow. Okay, on the, oh, oh, only on the hurricane side. Spitfire side, sorry, I might, might not be showing you. Spitfire side is just a normal wing. Damage, but on the hurricane side, it's a catastrophic possible wing. Well, it's a wing damage with possible catastrophic on a roll of 11. So it says we check for this now <clears throat> and check for catastrophic effect, if any. Right? Well, I'm doing this. I mean, the thing is, we don't have any bombers to like uh, look at right now with us. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to roll die on 11 or greater, so an 11 or 12, there's going to be a catastrophic wing hit. So chances are low, but you never know. It's a 7, okay. So not catastrophic. Um, so we can just leave this as a normal damage because this has got nowhere to go as of yet. So place the damage markers randomly on bombers, one marker per tile within the largest contiguous set of bomber tiles. Start with the tile if you fall in. Right. No bomber tiles. If there are no tiles in the bomber formation area yet, which is where we're at, place the damage markers on the interception map and once tiles are placed, apply the damage markers. Okay, well, I guess that's fine. I was going to leave it in that area, but you know what? That looks like a good place to put it as well. So it's a bomber formation area. We just don't know what the bombers are yet. And they're not revealed. So that's fine. Good. Um, um, and once tiles are placed, we'll then apply that damage marker, right? Friendly fire. If any RAF fighters in the bomber formation area place an equal number of hit markers randomly on RAF fighters and perform hit checks, well, there's not. And by the way, this is our... Bomber formation area in here. It's not looking very big right now. It's because I've brought this down a little and I've got the sequence of play here, but it can it can be adjusted. Right, so none of that's happening. Right, so we're now moving on to card 6B though, because there's more. So this is part two of two, you can see 6B. Tally ho, indeed. Right, if the raid marker is on the raid track, Right, it is, right? And now it's, this is going to come a bit clearer to me. So the raid marker is on the raid track, yes. Um, and the squadron is at high altitude. Uh, well, it's not, is it? It's not a high altitude. Um, I mean, I, I'm guessing the squadron gets placed. I'm sure it's going to tell me this when I look. I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to start at low altitude. So chapter one. Uh, 
squadron formation marker roll of die and place the squadron in the zone in the indicated low altitude. Right, okay. So it's not it's not a high altitude. But this this part was kinda confusing to me because well, I didn't really deal with it. That's that was the thing. But now some of this is yeah, becoming clearer, like I say. Okay, so it's not at high altitude. Um, I, but if it was, I'd be able to spend one fuel to immediately perform contact, and then if so, go to card ten A, which would, that would have been really good, right? But I mean, I've not had the chance to do anything yet. So, but let's move on. Let's move on. If you do not or can't attempt contact, right? You may spend one fuel to move the squadron formation marker to an adjacent station or change altitude, not both. Right. See, that's, that, see, that's so much clearer. Um, although it does say station, but I believe this was brought up. This, I think this was brought up in, the, in BGG. That this shouldn't say station. It should say zone, I think. Because what we're doing, and, and this is also the bit that confused me a bit, because it said station, and I, I thought it was out here. You know, I thought it was like, and we had uh, formations out here, and but it's not, it's, it's just talking about this. So it's saying that we, and it, station, sh that's the wrong word, it should be zone, I'm pretty sure it should be zone, because we're in the middle zone, right? And it's saying there, um, uh, I, must spend I must spend one fuel to move the quadrant Squadron formation marker, which is that? That's what that is. And to be honest, I should have clicked for that. And this is what I think Stu was trying to get across to me, squadron formation marker, but he mentioned vector, under the vector thing, and I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? If you, if you mentioned these zones, maybe I, I would have clicked. And they, they eventually got it to me, so it's fine. Um. If you do not or cannot, you spend one fuel to move squadron formation marker to an adjacent station or change altitude. So adjacent zone or change altitude, not both. So I could move to there or I could move to there or I could go high in the middle. I need to spend one fuel to do that, right? Um, what does it say after that? Uh, tally ho, raid. If you perform contact and the marker looks like this, postpone applying the raid result until the raid vector step of the intersection sequence 40. That's because the flat comes before the raid marker, I think. I think that's I think that's what that's saying. Uh, page 52. Well, I looked at this a lot of times. But I was looking at it wrongly, of course. So let me come back to... Well, we've we'll, we'll dealt with flat, haven't we? It's tally-ho. So what it says in the rules is... But the thing that... The thing that I didn't really pay enough attention to... What it says in the rules is tally-ho. And then in square brackets, it's got raid vector sequence. And that means it only applies in that sequence. Uh, in that phase, if you like. Um, so, so anyway, it carries on. If the raid marker is on the raid track, you may spend one fuel to immediately perform contact. Um, slide the squadron's fuel cubes one space to the right. Squadron must be at high altitude. Well, we're not to make contact, so we can't do that. If you prefer not to perform contact, or you can, well, we can't, um, <laughs> zoom in on that or not? Uh, not to perform or can't, or if the raid marker is not yet on the raid track, well, it is. You may spend one fuel to move the squad information marker to an adjacent state. Again, it says station there, but it should say zone, I think, or change altitude, not both. If you perform contact, and that explains that bit, but that's, that's not. We, we didn't draw it that way. The red icons here, the flags down below. I think it's because the flags appear in first that you might alter things. I'm not going to go deeply into that because, well, we're, we've not got that. So do we 
move to the coast, we could move to the coast, we could go high altitude, or we could go in deep, but I think, I think going in deep silly, because we need to make contact with this, so I think I need some information here before I make this decision. Yeah, and so what I need to know here is the next step after this reveal, I mean, bear in mind we've got one more um, inbound vector marker to reveal. Next step is going to be fuel, which is a straightforward spend some fuel. I actually haven't got any fuel cubes up there. <laughs> okay, I do now. That's them in the full space of the Hurricane fuel track. Yeah, and what, what I was going to say was that um, the fuel step is just going to shift them along one to the right, uh, to the right. But the important step that, before I make this decision is what I want to know is what's best for me. Is best for is it better for me to be move up to high altitude here and spend the fuel, or move to the coast and spend the fuel, or stay where I am and not spend the fuel? That's the uh, decisions I want to try and get more right than I did the previous attempt. So the step after fuel is going to be contact. Yes or no. So we want to make contact. We want to get in right there, right away. Not, at least I think we do. So page 44 is contact. Um, so there's contact tables. Are, are they on the map? No. Right, where, where are they? Oh, you know where they are. Yeah, they are. They're on this play raid. They're on the play raid. So, this is what we need to have a glance at. So, remember, at the moment, we are in the middle zone. The raid marker's on the coast, so we're adjacent. So, we're in the adjacent zone. Uh, and at the moment, we are low. Um. Right, hold on, I'm missing something. Because we're in... We're in the middle zone. Yeah. Contact check procedure. Yeah, what what am I missing? Why is it I'm only getting middle zone here. What am I <laughs> I'm missing something obvious. I mean we done this the last time. I suppose I was a bit more I'm I'm trying to look ahead here and I, I wasn't doing that the last time. Position, tail, trailing low, well, an adjacent zone, trailing low, tail low, nose low. No, 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 we roll the die. Yeah, because the modifier, the modifier, no, sorry, the contact is automatic. So, yeah, so we, we are, if we select contact, you may perform contact if the squadron's formation is in the same zone or an adjacent zone. Well, we're going to be in an adjacent zone. So it is... Right, if we don't do nothing, we're sitting in the low... So we are going to be able to do that. Um, and then... Whatever we roll... Is where we're going to be. We could then spend a the fuel to adjust that. Modifier minus two of clouds. There's, n there's no clouds. Well, at this moment, but I think we've just got a fuel step in. Well, mind you, we've got another one of the vector markers to, to flip over, so that's got to come. If we moved into the same zone, um, there's a chance of getting this, which is good. If we move to high altitude, though, that doesn't change anything here, does it? It doesn't give us any... Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Plus one of high. But then we're not going to be in the same zone. 
I think we want to move into that zone, don't we? Because trailing's not very good. Tail's better than trailing. Flank's better, and then nose is better. Um, I mean, okay, we could roll high, and and then you get the option to spend that extra fuel. But I mean, I, I'm spending a fuel here already, so yeah, I think we want to we want to move into the zone, the coast zone. Okay, and you're at an hour there, Grant. <laughs> Done very well, but I want to be careful. So I am. I'm going to spend. I may spend one fuel to immediately... No, 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 no. It's this one. If you do not or can't attempt to contact, you may spend one fuel to move the squadron formation marker to an adjacent zone, not station, or change altitude, not both. Yes, so I'm going to spend that fuel. We're all going to come on to there. Just basically pretend that we're spitfires at full now. And I'm going to move that into the coast. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Uh, one hour, one minute. Right, so that is that resolved. So I can throw that away, I think. Don't think we needed to look at that again, actually. It never came up that we needed uh, any knowledge of it again. So now um, I'm going to flip this one. Ah, oh, it's messing... Well, it's moving the sun, I think. So... Ew, what is that? Oh, that's bad. That's not good. And while this is in here, I don't want to lose any guys. Yeah, that's a nasty one. Right, so the sun one is... Um, is it not going down here at all? No, it doesn't. I thought, because I've, I've actually just re realised there's lots of icons down here on the map. I mean, they're, they're kind of brief, what they say. But uh, that's not one of them. Because these are kind of... Um, what is it these are? Vector marker results. So there it's there. Turn point. Uh, roll a die. Even shift the, con shift the sun clockwise. If odd, shift counterclockwise. Um, yeah, it's not going to change it. So, even it's clockwise, odd it's counterclockwise. Right, let's do that. Even clockwise, I remember. Uh, or counterclockwise. So, anti-clockwise. So the sun was in the starboard high, now it's in the nose high, which supplies sun to the lead station and the head station. That one and that one. And for, from our point of view, it's only going to cover the nose, isn't it? Okay. Uh, well, it's not, it's not helping out the two uh, escort stations that we've got. So that's good. Uh, and then, yeah, and then we've got this horrible... Well, actually, hang on. This I should have moved this back. Yeah, I should have went back to car one. Ah, uh, yeah, I was forgetting. I, I, yeah, you just sometimes get carried away, and then we should have looked at card seven, Grant. <laughs> if you're going to use the cards, use the cards. You know. Um, and there, well, we're just on the cards. Uh, the the sun. <laughs> That's turn point. Uh, go back to car one again. And now we've got go to car two. Right. Which doesn't look so good. So this is measure smats. Um, uh, let's see. I, re I recall reading some errata. I've still not printed out that errata page or two. Uh, what did say? There was something regarding measure smats, but... Uh, okay, if the raid marker or squadron marker is in the deep zone of the raid track, Mr. Smith's result converts to a straggler result. Well, the raid marker's in the coast and the squadron marker's in the coast, so no. 
The red marker squadron marker is not in the deep zone of the red track. Select a section at random. If none, select a fighter at random. Well, yeah, none. Of, we're all ready for action. <laughs> We've got complete sections. The selected section or fighter is attacked by 109s if a section spends one fuel. Come on, really? Draw a Louis Fafa advantage card and go to card D1 dogfight cycle sub deck. Yuck. Measure Smiths, 53. <sighs> uh, one section RAF fighters attack by one of the nines. If a section immediately spends one fuel, draw if I have a match card immediately fight a dog fight. If you fight, select a section at random. If none, select the fighter at random. Deep zone, yeah, it doesn't apply. Yeah. That's not nice, because that might knock us lost contact as well. Because remember, you go into a second round of dogfight, and then um, you become lost contact. Right, the numbers are, for this section, it's 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 5 to uh, 79, and whatever the other one is. So, let's see what section uh, it's attacking. Uh Oh no, yeah, we've got an advantage card. So six is yellow, I think. Yeah, four is six. So it's attacking the yellow section. Um, so yeah, that was my point about bringing this down because the last time I thought there's no bombers here. Well, I think we did actually have the bombers pretty quick. Ah, in fact, should the bombers not be out yet? No, I don't think so. It did tell us there that the escort markers would be out. It says when it is time to determine the type of bombers. Yeah, I think when we go to the bomber area, it'll tell us then. Yeah, it's, they're not out yet. They're not out yet. We don't know what we've got. Um, okay, so yellow is a target. And they've got to spend one fuel. So, swing up there and spend their one fuel. Um, and yellow, green and blue are still back. Uh, sorry, green, red and blue are still back there. Uh, and now we're going to draw a Lufaf at advantage card. I've reshuffled all the decks. Um, I haven't got... And these are the Hurricane decks, obviously. I haven't put the Bomber decks out because we might have light bombers. We might have medium bombers, so... So I'm going to draw with advantage and see where this dogfight's going. And I need to get things wrapped up now because it's getting a bit late. Um, right, we're tailed by a swarm. So let's get that sorted. Uh, did it say it was one on rings? <coughs> Yes, one on nines. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I was putting them like that. That's not right, is it? They should be like that. Okay, so we're tailed by a swarm, and what is the the possible event? Oh, dear. Section only. Green pilot becomes independent. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, we've got a green pilot. So section only, green pilot becomes independent and is tailed by a rota, replace the swarm with another rota. Okay. Um, so yellow three is a green pilot. So he becomes independent. And oh, ouch. he's tailed by a rota one and nines. Um, tail by right and um, then we replace the swarm with another rotter so that comes away and that goes like that I think that's right yeah 
Stay tight. Section only. Green pilot comes independent. As tailed by a rotor. Replace the swarm. Replace the swarm with another rotor. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Right, well, it's not good, but yeah, that's what it is. Um, so now we've got two separate dogfights here, haven't we? That's right, isn't it? Yeah, because this is independent and this is still the section. So we can do these in any order. Now, just remember you've got a veteran with privileges. Uh, thing is, the, the, the green pilot's now independent, so I don't think I can help him out, really. Yeah, if he, was, if he was still in my section, I might be able to help him out. But Right, well, let's resolve the... Sorry, it's, it's two separate attacks now, isn't it? I don't think I've had this before, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to do a dogfight cycle on the single, on the independent yellow three, green pilot. So where's my dogfight cards? So I want, I want, well, I suppose this is a new video, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because some people might not watch the first one, right? So I'm using I'm I'm using the um the sequence of play cards. They were designed by uh, I think Gina Willis put these together, and they're based on Stuka Joe's sequence of play card system that he, he made for. He's made for a few games, I think. RAF. John Butterfield game, uh, which I've done, I printed out the cards for that, and so anyway, these are the cards for this, and there's a lot of cards. There's two dog, uh, there's two cycles. You've got the dogfight cycle here, and the bomber cycle, um, and then you've got all the cards that run the rest of the game. But you, you, well, I say you're going to use these quite a lot. You're going to get used to the fact that you don't really need them and whatever. So this one says place fighters, um, which is basically what we've just done. We've applied the advantage cards event, okay? So we've done that. Um, and then we move on to the next card, basically. Uh, and then we, we would then do head-on combat first. And this is in the sequence of play. It's just that these cards help you deal with it. So there's no head-on combat. You can see that we're... The, the combat has both been tailed. Uh, and uh, in actual fact, sorry, we're dealing with this at the moment, not not the section. So then we get tailed maneuver. So we can carry a maneuver if we're being tailed as long as we're not hit. And that is the case. Um, so the maneuvers are evade, slip on turn. Right, so I'm going to select an evade. For this guy, uh, which means we get to draw two cards, and then if he's still tailing us at the end, we get to reduce them by one. So two tailed cards. Remember, we're a green pilot, single independent fighter against one oh nines. We get to look at them both, and oh, look at this! Look at this! <laughs> that would have been perfect if it hadn't been green. <laughs> So I get to choose this or this, and uh, we didn't do a turn, so that doesn't count. So we're either going to do vanish and take a hit, or vanish and a green pilot's going to take a hit. Well, this is a green pilot, so um, it doesn't matter which one we take, we're taking a hit, yeah? Yeah, and yeah, there's nothing we can do. So we're going to take vanish and take a hit. So he vanishes and we can take the evade away because it's not going to be doing anything after this as well. Uh, so yellow three has to take a hat. Shuffle, shuffle. Make it nice and low. And I get a seven. Mm. 
Okay, not good. Right, so move on to this. Eh, uh, no, stop, stop, stop. We, we deal with this, don't we? So we can't... Oh, yeah, and I'm forgetting. Remember, if it goes into another round, these become lost contact. So that's not going to be the case. However, this guy's got to survive. So there's no tailed combat. Uh, sorry, we've just done the tail combat. There's no tail in combat. Now we do our hit checks. Right, so we've got a 7 or greater, or he's going to the fuselage fate box. Come on, be nice. It's been a, oh, that's a bad start, that measure smats. Come on. Ah, damn it. Alright, so we'll lose green three to the fuselage fate box. There's nothing I can do about it. I don't believe. So that goes back in there. Right, and I'm going to take the pilot with me. So, and keep his green cube on top. Uh, just because it caused me some confusion. So, fuselage, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, he's away up there. In the fuselage fate box, right? Yeah, it did cause a little bit of confusion. Mixed me up and I think it caused an error or two. Okay, so then we do... Well, we're basically going back to the gun and we've... Place the fighters. I think this is right. This, I, like I say, I've not, I've not had this situation come up before, but I think this is how you should deal with it. So I'm just going to push on. So tail maneuver this time. Um, I know I seem to be going for a vade all the time, but I think that's all I want to try and do here. So we're going to evade again. And uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I know there's a vid, a vid. What one is it? Follow my lead. When tailed, cancel an icon, tailed. Uh, Pilot must be independent of sexual leader. Mover, a mover must be a vid. Yeah. Follow my lead says, when tailed, cancel an icon result in a dogfight car. Pilot must be independent or sexual leader. And the maneuver must be a vid. So, he is a... Uh, veteran pilot he is the leader um so i'm going to do an evade that's not to say i'm going to use my privilege but it allows us to use it if things get bad so i'm going to do the evade and uh, now this is a section against 109 so it's the above half um well it's not the worst i mean this one's horrible <laughs> so we're not doing that one um yeah, section against one on nines. Yeah, so I'm going to do this one. So it's going to cost us a fuel. Then we're going to get a reduction. And remember, because we evade, we're going to get another reduction. He's going to go away. So cost us a fuel. Uh, yellow. Okay, burning some fuel though. Yeah, because I had to spend one for that measurements to start with. I didn't really want to do that. And then he reduces yeah so he flips over to that side and then the evade at the end it says that if um if still tailed reduce the the loof off a fighter marker so he can only reduce one more and that doesn't damage them or kill them or anything like that it just gets us free of them so and more importantly, I suppose, make sure we don't go lost contact as well because we would end up going lost contact there if we go into the second uh, cycle of the dogfight. So. Okay, so that's that. That was the measure smits. That was that done. Um, I can put that back, I think. Um, so where are we now? Yeah, we... We basically just resume now to where we were. Back with this reveal card. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, I need to get this wrapped up. Sorry. Now I'm 20 minutes coming up. Uh, that was Measure Smiths. We would go back to card one. However, we have no more of these to do. So, if all markers in the space have been revealed, which they are, we're going to go to card 9, Fuel Step. Um, 
Let's just pause. I could just about do... Yeah, because the next bit's contact, is it? Right, so but fuel's pretty simple to deal with. So fuel, we spend one fuel. Everybody moves a fuel. Yellow's burning it like... There's no tomorrow. Um, red, green and blue are being a bit more... <laughs> Hold back on that. Uh, so we've spent a fuel. Um, that's that step done. We move on to the next card. Uh, it's going to be contact, question mark. Um, so I'm going to leave things there. Uh, we should be able to be making contact because we're in the same zone, etc. And... Um, yeah, we want to get in there as quick as we can. And we don't want to mess about going after escorts, remember, Grant? <laughs> Let's go for the bombers. I should have thought about that one, I suppose, really, yeah. If you, if you think about the type of game it is, you know, we're meant to be taking out the bombers here. That's that's, that's the whole point of these aircraft. Yes, they're capable of fighting with German fighters, but their purpose is to take out the bombers. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for the night. Um, so, got that started. I hope that disappointing is by me starting again, but uh, I suppose, like I say, Patrol 2 would just been the same sort of stuff, but maybe <coughs> with some different pilots involved, etc. So, yeah, anyway. Okay, uh, back to work tomorrow. Don't think I'll get back tomorrow. Uh, although, I've taking a couple of days off near the end of the week again, so um, I'll not be away for long, I don't think. Um, and, uh, and you know, uh, yeah, I'll be back soon, to be honest. Cheers.